sitting in a row, thinking as they go, who's next to go? Oh, Philip. You know, Mr. Lake Lauren, I don't mind joking on the full stuff. I must say I was hungry, but I don't think I could ever fancy Tintunk again. I was wanting that meal. I feel like a new man. We've been nearly 24 hours without food. That does lower the morale. Somehow, in the daylight, everything seems different. Well, you must not forget that there is a dangerous homicide and lunatic somewhere loose on the island. Why is it that one doesn't tell Jerry about it anymore? It's because we know now, without any doubt, who it is. Uh, Lord? That's right. See, it was the uncertainty before. Looking at each other, wondering which. I said all along that you got your arms wrong. You did, my sweet, you did. That is until you went completely back to suspecting us all. <laughs> Seems rather silly in the light of day. Very silly. Allow me to get his arms wrong. What's happened to her? Well, we know what she wants us to think happened to her. What is that you you find? A shoe. One shoe, then pretty, on top of the cliff. In reference to Armstrong went completely off her onion and committed suicide. It's all very circumstantial. Even to the one little China Indian broken over there in the doorway. I think that was rather doing it. A woman wouldn't think of doing that if she was just going to drop her, though. Yes, quite so. But we're pretty sure that she didn't drop her. She had to make it seem that if she was the seventh victim all along. Supposing she really is dead. I'm a bit suspicious of death without bodies. How extraordinary to think that there are five bodies in there and we're sitting here eating ten tongues. The delightful minimum disregard of all the facts. There are six bodies, and they're not all in there. Oh, no, 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 no. She's right. There are only five. What about Mrs. Roberts? I've counted her. She makes a fit. Look here. Marston is one. Mrs. Rogers, two. General McKenzie is three. Rogers, four. And we rank five, and Wargrave is six, seven, eight, nine, Armstrong, ten. That's right, old man. Sorry. I say, would it be an idea if you brought <coughs> Mrs. Rogers down and shoved her in the morgue, too? I'm a detective, not another team. For heaven's sake, <laughs> can we stop talking about bodies? The point is, Armstrong murdered them. We should have known it was Armstrong right away. How did Armstrong get hold of your revolver? Having the slightest idea. Tell me exactly what happened with the night. Well, after you threw a fit of hysterics and locked yourself in the room, we decided to better off a little bit. So we all went to bed. Locked ourselves in our room. About an hour later, I heard someone move past my door. I went out into the hall and knocked on Lord's door, and he was in there, all right? Then I went to Armstrong's room, and it was empty. Then that's when I knocked on your door and drove you to sit tight, no matter what happened. I came downstairs, the window to the balcony was open, and our revolver was laying right beside us. But why did Devin with Armstrong shut that revolver away? Don't ask me. Either an accident or she's crazy. Where do you think she is? Somewhere watching, lurking, waiting to have a crack with one of us. We ought to search the house. What? And walk into an ambush? Oh, never thought of that. Are you quite sure you didn't hear no one moving about after we left out? Oh, I imagine all sorts of things. But nothing short of setting the house on fire will get me to unlock my door. I see. Just thoroughly suspicious. What's the use of talking? What are we going to do? You ask me, sit tight and take notice. Look, I'm going to go after her. What a dog of the bulldog breed you are, boy. And between friends and prejudice beside, you did go in for that spot of perjury, didn't you? <coughs> well, I don't suppose it makes any odds now. Later was innocent, all right. The game squared in between us and put him away for a stretch. Mind you, I wouldn't be admitting all this if it wasn't that. You thought we were all in the same way. Well, I couldn't admit all this to Miss Janice Wargrave, could I? No, hardly. I said, that fellow Seaton, do you think he was innocent? I'm quite sure of it. Wargrave had plenty of reason to have him out of the way. You know, Lord, it's delightful to know that you've come off the verge of his perch. I'm sure you made a tiny bit of it. Nothing like all this have done. They are a mean lot back in the end. I got my promotion though. The lander got penal servitude and died in jail. I couldn't tell you he was going to die, could I? I mean, no. That was your bad luck. His, you mean? <clears throat> well, yours too, because as a result of that, you're going to get your life taken unpleasantly soon. What? 
But who? Armstrong? I watch it. You have to remember, there's only three little Indians left. Well, what about you? I should be quite all right, thank you. <laughs> I've been in some tight places before and got out of them. And I mean to get out of this one. Besides, I've got a revolver. Yes, that revolver. Now listen, you said you just found it lying in. What's the proof you haven't had it all the time? Same old gramophone record. Not enough room in your head for one idea at a time, is it? No, but it's a good idea. <laughs> and you're sticking to it. You know, I would have thought of a better story than that if I were you. I only wanted something simple that a policeman could understand. What's wrong with the police? Well, nothing. Now that you've left, of course. <laughs> uh, if you're an honest man, you should pretend. Oh, come on, boy. Neither of us is honest. If you're telling the truth for once, you ought to do the square thing and chuck that revolver down there. Don't be an ass. I said I'm going to at the house of Armstrong, haven't I? If I'm willing to do it, will you lend me that revolver? No. The revolver is mine. It's mine, and I'm sticking to it. Then do you know what I'm beginning to think? You're not beginning to think it, you square-headed flatty. That's what we've been thinking about since last night, and you're going back to your original idea. I'm the one and only you and unknown only. Arm. I won't contradict you. Well, think what you damn well please, but I'll warn you. Imagine you two are behaving like a pair of children. Sorry, teacher. Of course, the Lombard isn't the unknown. The unknown only is Dr. Armstrong, and I'll tell you one very good proof of it. Oh, what? Think of the rhyme. Four little Indian boys going out to sea. A red herring swallowed one, and then there were three. Don't you see the subtlety of it? A red herring? That's Armstrong pretended suicide, it's only red herring because, really, she isn't dead. That's very ingenious. To my mind, it's absolute proof. You see, it's all mad because she's mad. She takes a weird, crazy pleasure to see me to the rock, making everything happen in that way. Dressing up the judge, hitting the rock while he's chopping sticks. You know how her but Miss Rip, she could have just drugged her? She has to make it all fit in. That might give us our next point. Where do we go from here? Three little Indian boys walking in the zoo. A big red hug when it did there were two. She'll have fun with that one. There's no zoo on this island. I say, Captain Lombard, what about a nice bottle of beer? Do stop thinking of beer, Lord. All this talk of food and drink and <coughs> beer undone. But there's plenty of beer in the kitchen. Yes, there is. And if anyone wants to get rid of you, the first place they'll think to put a lethal dose is in a nice bottle of beer. <laughs> A boat! It's a boat! Yes, we will. I haven't been beaten yet, 